I'm Jake Bruton, and today we're at one of our infill new construction houses, and I want to talk to you about why we have two by eight T studs on a two by six wall. Let's do it now. Okay, so this house is a infill lot in Columbia, Missouri. There was a house here, we tore it down, so technically it's a, a demo and an infill, I guess. Uh, this particular project, uh, it's not as driven by energy efficiency as some of our projects, but it's still very much in the forethought process. So the, the wall assembly here from inside working out is half inch gypsum, uh, two by six T studs, filled with cellulose, uh, loose fill cellulose insulation, zip R6. So that's the zip panel that you can see here with the one inch of uh, EPS behind it and uh, or polyiso behind it. Uh, and um, you know, we have a, a higher than what's required by code R value wise, but we have uh, our general rule of thumb to knock down condensation and, and, and warm the assembly. We have that about 30% of our, our total insulation package to the outside. So we don't have to have T-studs if we're doing that. We just find that uh, partnering with them for this kind of stuff, uh, the added R value, the thermal bridge, those are great, and I know that those are their selling points, and I know that if they were to ask me to say something nice about them, they would probably say, thermal bridge, thermal bridge, thermal bridge. I'm gonna tell you that uh, we like how straight they are. So we've done some projects out of LSL, we've done some projects, uh, especially cabinet walls with LVL studs. Those are pricey. These are a little more cost effective, a little more friendly to our client. We also get the added thermal break. So if that's a two by six wall with zip R on the outside of it, why do we have a two by eight T-stud? And this is my first time working with them. Uh, they came out with these a while ago, but we haven't had them on one of our projects yet. So let's look at what we have here. What we have is we have a home that when we went to final permit, the city said, oh, by the way, that's in this new historic district. So it's some of the things are gonna have to change. One of the things that they said you need to change is this wall of the house being a side wall uh, is more than 35 feet long, uh, or more than 30 feet long, sorry. And because it's more than 30 feet long to meet historical standards, we need an elevation change in the wall. Well, this budget is slightly, or this, this budget is, uh, slightly the driving force behind the project. So we can't just add a bump to the foundation willy-nilly or we didn't want to. So we were looking for a creative way to make an elevation change uh, in the wall without having to change something in our form work and add extra concrete and corners and all those sorts of things. So what we came up with was we talked to the city and we found out that the elevation, the way that the, the code is written, we only need an inch of elevation change. It doesn't seem like much, but this is an elevation change. We'll have uh, hardy lap siding, a flat trim, and then hardy lap siding. So it'll very much show and be seen, uh, be able to be viewed from the street, even this little elevation change when we're done. Right now it's a little hard because it's all green and black tape. Uh, but what we've done here is the interior wall is still perfectly straight. There is no bump or elevation change on the inside. We just went to a two by eight T stud. Uh, and that's because the bearing calculations for the T-stud don't make it so that the whole thing has to sit on the wall, just the two by six part needs to sit on the wall. So we get that added uh, difference between the five and a half and seven and a quarter, that protrudes, and then we just went ahead and wrapped our zip R the rest of the way around it. So on the inside, you'd never know that elevation change is there other than the windows in this stacked assembly are gonna be a little deeper. Uh, and on the outside, we get that elevation change and we didn't have to change anything on the foundation. Now, the unique part is the architect on this project already had a stacked window assembly here and two stacked window assemblies on the far side at the stairwell. So what we're able to do is just use that as our point of reference and now our window plus our window trim will get us the width of this stack assembly and we'll do it here and we'll do it on the far side and this is one of those like we felt really smart when we figured this out and that's why we're making a video about it obviously but this was problem solving with the client's budget and the client's needs in mind and in reality if we had to do a three or four inch or a foot bump here 
we probably wouldn't have just bumped to the outside and left everything smooth on the inside. We would have had added flooring, added uh, mud corners on our gypsum. We would have had added outside corners on our trim. There would have been all sorts of things that become a headache. And instead, the only thing that's different is we have some extension jams that are already being made out of drywall on three sides. They're just a little deeper. I don't think that this compromises the structure of the house. I don't think that this compromises the aesthetic of what we had going here in the first place. You'll have to be the judge when we get done with this infill house. Uh, but I do know that this is one of those details that I don't think the clients will notice, and yet it satisfied what the city was asking. And that's kind of our goal here is that we wanna fly under the radar with simple details. We don't want, um, this is not a project where we're screaming at people, look at me, look at me, look at me. We're trying to meet the needs of this family and a, a growing family and a, and a happy home first, and then we'll deal with the city's requirements for um, you know, historic committee and everything like that. And don't take this as a complaint towards the city because I, you know, it is a nice neighborhood that there are historic homes and they're going to great lengths to try to make sure that that, that aesthetic is maintained in the neighborhood and that value to the clients that already live here is maintained. So till next time, check out the two by eight stud. I didn't know they made it until recently. We're happy with them too. Uh, don't forget to follow me on Instagram. Don't forget to sign up for the newsletter. There are two newsletters a week. There are something like 12 videos a week. There is content from people that you didn't even know were on the Build Show Network yet that you're gonna miss if you don't sign up for the newsletter. So make sure you do. Uh, we gotta welcome Will King and Travis uh, Brungart and uh, Brian Euler from uh, Pioneer Builders or Pioneer Homes. Now I can never remember what it is. Sorry, Brian, uh, to the team. But I'm learning stuff from those guys every week. I'm learning stuff from the original contributors every week. I love the stuff that these people are putting out. It's all great and I'm happy to be part of it and I'm happy that they allow me to still make videos. So sign up for that newsletter. Till next time, thanks for watching.